Hello and a very warm welcome. My name is Udo Sendaidukai and in this video we are going to take a look at the mono delay. Sounds boring, but if you think like that, you're wasting a lot of potential. Put simply, a delay is just an echo with a few other parameters that can influence the echo. And this is exactly what makes the seemingly unspectacular device or plugin so interesting. Then let's get started. Hey! I do all this with Bitwig, but it can also be achieved with other DAWs and plugins. As usual, I show you how to do this in a moment. At a certain point, I won't say too much anymore and just overlay some information, because it's all about listening to timbre, rhythm and melody. So let's start with an overview of the delay one. Let's make it a little bit bigger. So I use this delay one because um, it's a mono delay and it's a very simple delay and you can see everything what's on there. So um, there are um, some parameters for timing and one is uh, this block. These are 16s and the default setting is the third, uh, third 16 is over here. And you can just select which 16s you want to delay. And uh, this 16th you can delay as well, or um, maybe a little bit like fast forward with this slider as well, where you can um, delay or um, fast forward the echo on one third of in, in this whole range of this 16th. Another um, parameter is here switching to seconds or milliseconds. And um, here you can set the the tempo um, apart from the from the project tempo over here, so um, it can be completely unsynced, or you can sync it, um, for example, with a tool with Time Calc from Ensonic, so you know one hundred um, forty two seconds is, for example one uh, the third uh, 16th and then you get the same result over here and uh, that's that's it for this timing and syncing option then the next part is the feedback control and this is just a control where you tell the whole device to feedback the already processed signal back to itself. So if I put that all, all over to zero, it's just one echo that is pro processed with all these parameters. And below the timing block, there is the filter. And with the filter, you have the low cut and the high cut, where you can filter the original signal um, with this high and low cut filter. And um, the last um, parameter or the last knob is here, the mix knob, where you can set the um, range between the original signal, a mixture of the original signal and the whole wet signal of the, um, of the whole um, device or plugin. Then with this device, um, there is also an F bfx container and this is a feedback effects container and in this container you can put another effect or plugin in there to process the already processed signal to change something like for example um, you could put in here um, a pitch shifter and then the whole signal that you send um, in here and that it gets processed with the um, filter and uh, everything and the timing um, parameters gets uh, another effect with the pitch shifter and is then sent back to the um, delay again regarding um, how much you set the feedback over here and then it gets processed again with all these parameters sent, and then is sent to this pitch shifter again and so on and so forth. So the, the feedback knob maybe as an additional information is only the level, the volume level, um, you send back the whole signal to the beginning of the whole device so it gets uh, processed again. So the higher you set the feedback, the higher the volume is, the louder the signal is after processing with this whole with this all parameters. 
So, and this is just a, um, a Bitwig device, but you can achieve this um, as well, for example, with a Valhalla supermassive device, what is used as a um, reverb most of the time, but at the end it's uh, just a delay. And um, you can set the Valhalla supermassive with uh, some parameters, for example, here the width. So you can change it to mono. Um, device. Here's the mix parameter, the mix knob. Then here's the feedback. Maybe I just put the delay two. So you have the direct comparison, uh, the delay one. You have the direct comparison to that. Put it over here, maybe. So you have here the feedback, what's over here. And um, we put that back, so it's just zero, like zero over here. Then you have the mod rate and the depth, and the mod rate and the depth modulation rate is just um, the signal gets moved back and forth in time. So we switch that off. This parameter isn't here right now. You can put, you could put that in the um, feedback uh, effects container, for example. And then there is the high cut and the low cut over here so you could set that this is like 70 low cut you could set it over here for example like something like that and you can see it over here three kilohertz like that so we have nearly the same the same settings over here and if i put for example um, a search xt with just a sawtooth over here And maybe I should switch off the delay one. So this is this um, Valhalla Supermassive. And if I switch on the feedback, if it works with the feedback. So, and uh, on the Valhalla Supermassive, you can choose here as well uh, between milliseconds, note, dotted or triplet. And if you, if you use, for example, um, dotted, you can set here, for example, one, one eighth dotted. And this is the same like the third sixteen. So you just take notes uh, like that then you have only the even notes here, for example, the fourth note, an eighth note, the 16th, and then you have to go faster. Like this. So you can use the Valhalla Supermassive as a normal uh, mono delay as well instead of using it as a, a reverb. Okay, so one thing we need uh, to do right now is the, um, the routing like you have in Bitwig with the um, feedback FX section. You could change the whole routing to something like um, creating an, uh, let me create a new one, uh, creating a new um, FX track, like an AUX track, and in there you put, for example, Valhalla Supermassive. So, and let me just delete the delay one over here. And now you, you can just send, I have to put the mix to 100% on the, on the uh, AUX track. And now you could send the um, sound of the search with the send knob to the Valhalla Supermassive. Like this. Let's take it to dotted and on eight. Like this, for example less feedback and so on. Okay, so, but now we have just a simple, um, let me say, 
a normal like sending a part of the original signal to an aux track and then you get a delay what you can do on the same um, track here as well but what we want to uh, want to achieve is that we have a feedback channel on the on the um, Valhalla supermassive so I can put something on the on the back that gets fed into the super uh, to the Valhalla supermassive again so let me just increase that a little bit because you can't see that <laughs> So in Bitwig, you have on um, aux track um, feedback sent. Maybe on some other DAWs, I don't know, there is as well this um, um, way to uh, feedback something. So I could just put, for example, a pitch shifter over here and could say, okay, I um, create like a pitch shifting But I want to feed back the whole signal to Valhalla Supermassive. So I can use this feedback knob and you have to be very careful. Let me just put a peak limiter over here. So the signal and over here doesn't get too much, uh, too loud. See, it starts playing on its own. Maybe you have to put some more like EQing or something. Like that or prevent, prevent, prevent the whole thing. like that so but um, if you don't have something like such a feedback uh, knob you could change it in another way or you can achieve that in another way and you can just add another fx track and in this track you put in for example the pitch shifter i always use a peak limiter over here because it's always dangerous to do it without so from the valhalla supermassive um um track or uh, aux track i sent everything to the pitch shifter device and on the pitch shifter device i put everything on zero but on the pitch shifter device i sent it back to the valhalla so it's it's get sent from the uh, from the search xt from the instrument track to the valhalla supermassive then to the pitch shifter and the pitch shifter sends it back to um the Valhalla supermassive. And there's one thing you have to you have to know if you do that because if you do it like that nothing happens and let me guess on the wrong trap track here you have to It gets very fast, very nasty. So you can just put uh, um, create a routing for your feedback channels and Please always be very careful because um, it uh, things can uh, escalate very quickly and put everywhere uh, a limiter over here, over there so that you don't harm your ears or harm your your monitors or your headphones or everything else. So this is a way to achieve this whole feedback um, FX um, channel thing in other DAWs that don't have the. Um, a feedback uh, FX container in the device itself or the plugins that don't have that or the, the if the DAWs don't have the feedback knob. Okay, let's delete all this again and then I take just the delay one because I take the delay one because it's just a very simple and, and a very uh, easy 
device to understand because you can see everything with one or two eyes. Okay, so let's have a look on the delay right now. So we did all the, the panning and everything, uh, not the panning, the uh, feedback and everything. And now we want to start with like, um, you have no idea what to do. You want to create something and you, you don't know. I also have a drum loop over here. There's nothing special, just a four on the floor and uh, really nothing uh, great, but it helps uh, just to, um, have a like a navigation what the all the delays and echoes are doing in the rhythm so what i do now i create a very simple a very simple uh melody and this melody is just just like let me 16th and on every quarter there's a 16th. So this is my melody. Nothing really great, but with this simple tool, the uh, a mono delay, for example. And I would start always with a mono delay, not with a stereo delay, because um, you should start with um, less complexity and then build up on different things. And every time you think you need more complexity, you can just dial more complexity in there. So start with a mono delay. And um, I'll remove complexity as well, uh, uh, removing the feedback. So I just have this right now. So very boring. <laughs> And now I can start with um, opening up the filter. For example, I could start with just selecting different speeds. And if you if you come over one quarter, because we use every quarter, it gets the same repeats. Here you have the, with the fourth, you have like a phase shifting a little bit because the delay is delayed a little bit. So it gets, it gets a little bit more like, um, yeah, this phasing, this um, levitating, I don't know the, the English word for that. So when, when the sounds are like uh, moving a little bit around this um, very nice um, phasing. So, and now you could use, for example, the filter to change the, or the mix knob to change the, the, the um, loudness of the echo. And this is kind of uh, a fake uh, velocity. So maybe I, I just leave the mix knob uh, over here and just reduce the high frequencies. Let me just play it in the original and then I reduce it. Then you get the idea of different velocities and then you start um, hearing like a rhythm or something. Or maybe I just use the third, the default state. Sounds not like velocity, but if you take away the high frequencies, for example, and play a little bit with a mix knob, you get this like the in-between note. You could start using the slider over here to delay it even a little bit further. It's a little bit like a swing parameter. Uh, maybe 
make it a little bit quicker, faster. And you notice already every time when I change something, you hear like glitches. And this is something you should always pay attention to, because you could use these glitches to make some other very interesting things. Okay, so let's put it again in the middle. And then you could start um, using the filter, for example, with the feedback. parameters like this, for example. Just use the milliseconds, and we had the 142 as maybe <laughs> like milliseconds. Didn't I get that right? 16, ah, 316, so it's 200, 385, 427 should be 427 around. So this is the same, and you could use that. You could use this as a glitch, for example. You could just automate this feature, or in Bitwig you could use a modulator or in other DAWs you have maybe something similar. <laughs> DAWs, yeah, for <laughs> could use an LFO, for example, and maybe do some crazy stuff, maybe not that quick. Something like this, for example. So, and now, We could use, for example, a phase shifter, a uh, pitch shifter, not a phase, phase shifter, in the um, feedback FX container. So, and um, the whole game is always playing with the um, filter and the feedback and the mix and all. And um, this is always like um, the game of um, catching the volume though, so that, that it doesn't get too loud, but loud enough. If I turn on the, or open the high cut,
you, you already can hear that you can do really great effect. You just use the feedback knob to, let's do it like this, just open up the effect. Maybe here if you're wearing headphones that if the low cut is too low you get like a knocking that gets louder and louder and louder. Maybe let me just put an, an EQ so you maybe can see that as well. What's happening? See this one? See how this builds up. You could use it as well as an as an effect, like this, for example. Just use, for example, some effect from the pitch shifter device. And always have in mind, so you can put in or dial in some absolute uh, parameters, so some, some absolute values, like it's now. Or you um, use the movement as an effect. And always be aware that you should look where is an effect. So sometimes it's in, in, um, in the very small movements there is an effect. And sometimes there are effects in big movements. Or when you end the movement like... have to fiddle around with the feedback and the filters to just catch the sound so it doesn't build up too much. So I just can use like this. So, and now let's turn on the drums. And maybe let's make it a little bit more, a little bit more interesting. Just increase this and try to make the whole thing a little bit longer and Just join the whole thing. And maybe um, change. No, this is not nice. Let's take 
this one. And change the length of the note, for example. This one, for example. Or maybe just move the whole note, for example here, this one here, and this one here. slowly but it builds up oh. oh this is very deep I should put it in over here um, a little cut so Nothing really special. This is still a really boring. seconds again. Words, it sounds most of the time more pleasing. It's like 
like an alien mumble. I think 472 or something was the 16th, the third 16th over here. Or maybe just use not a pitch shifter, maybe just use a flanger for example. Or no flanger. about the timing, what you what you dial in for example in milliseconds and the filter and the feedback. And you already heard that if you remove all the uh, complexity like the feedback, Just play with the, the timing, the echo, and uh, we already played with the notes and the pitch of the notes, the length of the notes, and the position of the notes. Like here's, for example, no note, it comes a little bit late over here. You can achieve a lot of things that doesn't that don't that doesn't sound like amazing right from the start. But you, you uh, layer um, piece by piece or step by step some more complexity on it. And even the sound is nothing special, it's just a sawtooth. You could, for example, uh, put that a little bit down. Where is it? Transpose down. And I just use the filter because we, we only have like now this Sinking, and I just use the filter. And if I start using the feedback, And the very boring clip and the very boring sound and everything got a little bit more interesting. And if I just use uh, another um, effect on the feedback FX, like for example this flanger right now. And the interesting part is we have a feedback here as well, a positive and a negative feedback. timing for the flanger over here and we have some other options over here as well and we can start playing with all these options so we get additional complexity in the echoes every echo is a little bit different because the flanger is changing it and if I Put this on really quick. Every echo will sound a little bit the same regarding which number, uh, echo number or number of echoes it is. So the loudest one you hear more clearly. Now it starts adding up.
then then you add another layer of complexity on, on all that. You could use, for example, in this flanger the retrigger, then the flanger will always be retriggered on every node. But I don't want to use that because I want that the flanger or the LFO of the flanger is just going on. And here you have different oscillator or LFO oscillators or LFOs. one of the Sometimes you have to search for the effect. This one again. Just combine, for example, with the pitch shifter again. Let's take this one. 
Less, for example. still can use at the end for example <laughs> an additional reader.
dangerous over here. This is like now continuously descending. Like, how, how is this called? The Barber Roll? I don't know. Like, you're always descending. Great ambient sound. Yo. <laughs> okay, so this is this is a way you just can use um, a, some tools, removing the whole complexity of the very few parameters, and start building up the complexity on all that, and just try to start with a very simple. Thing um, mostly, if you if you have no clue what to do or you want to do something but you don't know how, just use like the simplest one. Start with the simplest idea you have. Um, don't be ashamed to start with like four, four quarter notes <laughs> and and drums and, and a four to the floor and just use that because um, you saw already that we can um, use this delay one with all these without all these effects to just. Uh, create some rhythmic things and um, if you if you want to um, create some more rhythmic things you could use the um, the notes over here let me let me just change this again to this one and maybe create it again like this one and this one and this so you have your four quarters and then you can just just trying to use with this standard or this default if I, if I load the default preset this is default and then you can just use uh, try to move the notes around just with the help of the delay in here And together with the with the delay, um, you're already creating something. You know, this is still like we started with four notes, very simple, just on one pitch. Added some irregularities to it, like moving them around and just listening and trying out, and then pitching them up and down, just one after each other, one step after after step. And then you can create some very interesting things, very interesting rhythms. If you just uh, listen to that, oh, I still have the reverb on. And if I just remove the drums, it's really nothing special. Just some some notes. You normally would say, okay, that's uh, very boring. But if you start adding like this, a delay, and with a little bit feedback, the next step or layer of complexity. I'm using this one, for example. 
regarding if you want to have a more like forward moving or more laid back rhythm swing use maybe a little bit reverb to make it more a little bit more interesting adding some drums and the drums they give you always the the center the beat of your music like um, Sometimes it's a little bit hard if you play with uh, echoes and, and reverbs that you keep the, the track, the orientation to the beat. And then sometimes a metronome or like a, a four to the floor drum is very helpful to, to um, create something um, interesting uh, rhythmically. So that's that's it. This was just a little um, view on small devices, and this device is not very over complex because it's mono, and uh, it has everything that a delay needs to have. And sometimes um, we just um, spend too much time on very complex devices and just use presets for something instead of just searching something. Um, that we like, and um, it it's all always um, a lot a lot of the times it is just starting with very simple things and then start layering um, things on each other. So then you get something very interesting. I hope this was interesting for you, and if you like it, uh, then give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And um, yeah, so that's it again. I hope you liked it. As I said, <laughs> my name is Odo Sindaidekai. Thank you for your time and attention. And I hope to see you soon again in the next video. Stay healthy, save the future. Take care. See you then. Ciao, ciao.